Hi, I'm Mike from Craft Supplies USA, and today I'm going to show you how to apply a Mylan's Friction Polish finish. Friction polish has been used by woodturners for a very long time, and the solids content is derived from the shellac beetle. Um, the shellac flakes are dissolved in the solvent, and then it's easily applicable on the lathe, and is a really good finish for woodturners. I'll show you some of the tips and tricks I've learned over the years of using this finish, how to increase the durability and gloss level that you get with the friction polish, and some other things along the way. So let's get into it. So the finishes we have out here is the Mylan's Friction Polish. We have our Mylan Cellulose Sanding Sealer and then our Wax. Uh, the Sanding Sealer is gonna be our first coat that's gonna give us a really good base for the Friction Polish to apply to. Then we'll be putting on a few coats of the Friction Polish to get that shine and the durability we want in the piece. And then we'll throw a little bit of wax on top just for some added durability as well. Um, the Friction Polish, it has a high solids content so it does settle over time. So you definitely wanna mix this stuff up really well. And I have, um, poured some of that into a smaller squeeze bottle that just makes it easier to apply. So let me get my lathe bed cleared off. All right, so the first step we want to get is our cellulose sanding sealer. This is going to be our base layer that's going to seal up all the wood pores and all the fibers and give us a really good base for the friction polish to be applied to. Uh, so that this piece here, this is just a small bottle stopper and this is out of Bacote. I've sanded this up through about 800 and I hit it with some steel wool to really refine the surface. And this material in and of itself is, has a high oil content in it. And so I'll use the sanding sealer to try and cut through some of that oil and give us a good level base for our friction polish. So when you're doing this process, make sure you have your piece sanded up really well. And I'll get some denatured alcohol as well just to remove any sanding dust. Denatured alcohol or a tack cloth will work really well. Um, just wipe the surface down because we don't want to trap the dust in the wood fibers. Um, especially on open poured woods because you see it really well. Um, but you look on the rag, that's a ton of oil content that's getting stripped from the denatured alcohol out of the wood. So Bacote, this piece of material actually is really high oil content. So we want to give ourselves a really good prepared surface for our friction polish. So I'll set that rag off to the side for a moment. The uh, reason I use denatured alcohol is it dries extremely fast. So this is already ready to apply. And I'll get a small section of paper towel and just shake this up just in case any solids or anything have settled in the can during shipping or on your shelf. And then we'll saturate our rag. As far as the application goes, just wipe it on by hand. Give it a good heavy coat. Let that soak into the wood fibers. And this will give us a really good durable base and an even base as well. Um, cellulose sanding sealer I use on almost every project, especially where woods will darken based on the type of finish I use. Um, if I'm gonna be using water locks in particular, that tends to darken the wood sometimes more than I'd like. Um, if I put a good even layer of cellulose sanding sealer down first, it help prevent some of that discoloration from the finish itself. So now that we have a good coat of sanding sealer, go ahead and set this off to the side. And then we'll get a clean rag and we'll turn our lathe on about 2000 RPM. Throw on your safety glasses just for security, safety sake. And we'll use that clean rag just to buff dry the surface. I want that cellulose to be nice and cured over before we put our friction polish on. Make sure you get your fingernail down into the grooves or any detail sections you've added to your turning. And that should be just fine. And you can see even just with a coat of cellulose sanding sealer on there, it's actually increased the shine a lot. It's given us a really good base for our friction polish. And it's, it's a pretty good sheen as it is. Once we have our sanding sealer on there and it's cured, I'll denib the surface with some steel wool or the Merlon non-woven pads. Just smooth out that surface. Sometimes you do get some streaking with the sanding sealer. And if that's the case, just go ahead and knock those ridges down with your steel wool. I'll set my steel wool off to the side for a moment, and then I'll get a rag or a tack cloth and just wipe away any of the dust from the sanding sealer itself. Now that we have our surface evened out and perfected, we can go ahead and apply our finish. 
So with the friction polish, like we talked about earlier, it does settle. So make sure you give your jar a really good shake up, get that stuff mixed well and nice and thoroughly before we apply it. And because this is a friction polish, it's in the name, this is applied on the lathe with friction and pressure from your rag. Once it's on your rag and you start applying it, it'll adhere to the surface and that friction and heat will help cure that onto the surface as you're applying it. So I'm gonna fold my rag over and I'm gonna bump my speed up about 2000, a little 2500 RPM. And we'll put a nice dime sized section on our rag. And then we'll just work the surface back and forth, evenly, evenly coating the surface as we go. Friction polish, that, that shellac in the finish has a pretty good smell to it. The shellac itself is food safe. They actually use shellac to coat food products with to help keep them from discoloring during transit and help them last longer. So the shellac is food safe, however the solvent is not. So if you're using this with something that's gonna come into contact with food, you need to wait at least 30 days or so for those solvents to all evaporate. So I've switched my rag over to a clean section of cloth and I'm gonna friction dry that surface. And you can see the gloss level's already almost double or triple what we had from the sanding sealer. I'll flip the rag over back to my finish section and put just a little more finish on there. And we'll do two or three coats, maybe four. You can definitely do more than that. I would do a minimum of two to three coats. The more coats you put on, the little more durable it is. The nice thing with friction polish is you can add uh, more friction polish down the road if you had a turning, you know, a year or two old and you wanted to refinish it. You know, if you had a, a good work holding method, go ahead, chuck it up, reapply finish and it'll look brand new again. So now I'm buffing out the second coat. And that gloss level is definitely increasing. I can see the reflection of the lights on the top surface here. Hopefully it's coming up for you guys okay. Uh, but friction polish is a really good finish for small projects like this. You know, if you're turning a lot of bottle stoppers or pens, small projects like that, that's really where friction polish shines. Project handles as well. It's not as durable as the melamine lacquer or, you know, some other finishes out there, but it is a quick applying finish and it has a good gloss level to it. I'd say it's just a step down from CA as far as the gloss goes, um, but it still retains that natural wood feel where the CA makes it feel plasticky. So play around with your finishes and see what you like the most. Okay, I'll apply my third coat now. Another dime sized amount of friction polish on the rag. And then just evenly coat those surfaces. Make sure you move the rag constantly, that way you don't get streaks. And then we'll switch back to a dry side of the rag and then buff this out. I'll set my friction polish off to the side now that we're done with it. And I'm getting some solids build up on my rag, so I'm gonna set that off to the side for a moment and get a new clean section of rag to final buff this. This finish really shines where you don't have two or three days to apply multiple coats and you don't wanna wait, um, especially in the winter time. Most guys' shops don't have good heating in there. So when you're doing those finishes that require 70, 80 degrees over three days, it's kind of a pain. So that's where friction polish really comes into play because you can just apply this and be done with it, you know, in just a few minutes. So let's stop the lathe and see what, how the finish looks. All right, so we have a really good high gloss finish. It enhances the grain of the Bacote really well, and it's gonna be nice and fairly durable. So one last thing I'd like to do with this piece before we're done is I will grab some wax. All right, so I'll be using the Mylan's wax here. It's a blend of carnauba and beeswax. Um, the nice thing about it is it's a really soft wax in the can, so it spreads and, and goes on really well. I use this a lot of time to top coat pepper mills and things that get used a lot to help re, you know, rejuvenate the finish. But I'll just buff that on by hand and then get a clean rag and then just finish buffing that in on the lathe with a little bit of friction. That'll help resist any water 
you know, if this is a bottle stopper for a wine bottle, wine's pretty acidic, so the wax will help protect that finish in the, you know, the friction polish finish we have on there. And it will bump the shine just a little bit more. So I'll take this off the lathe and show you guys what kind of finish we have. So that's a nice little Bacote stopper with a good uh, sanding sealer base, friction polish, and a little bit of wax. It's a super quick uh, finishing procedure. Uh, most turners already know about it, but hopefully some tips and tricks in this video will, get, will help you guys out. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and uh, subscribe to our channel for more wood turning videos.